I'm Kurt with the Madison Monpo Group, and with me is Martha, Lewis, and Jim, and we're going to discuss today Design by Robert Frost, and I'll begin by reading the poem. I found a dippled spider, fat and white, on a white heel-all, holding up a moth, like a white piece of rigid satin cloth, assorted characters of death and light mixed ready to begin the morning rite, like the ingredients of a witch's broth, a snowdrop spider, a flower like a froth, and dead wings carried like a paper kite. What had that flower to do with being white, the wayside blue and innocent heel all? What brought the kindred spider to that height, then steered the white moth thither, thither, thither in the night, what but design of darkness to appall, if design govern in a thing so small? Uh, this poem, um, critics have called this uh, perhaps one of Robert Frost's best poem, poems, if not his best. Um, so it's, a, it's a, one called it a perfectly executed sonnet, another Frost's greatest poem. Uh, another, arguably one of the best sonnets ever written by an American poet. Um, let's go through how the poem is structured first. Um, anyone want to take a crack at what kind of sonnet they think this is? A central round before the Shakespearean sonnet and the Petrarchan sonnet. Um, you might recall the Petrarchan is a, B, in terms of the rhyme, rhyme scheme, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, and then C, D, E, C, D, E, and for the last six lines. It's the last six, in this case, are A, C, A, A, C, C. Correct. That's, so, what, that's how I run it. Yeah, as well. so I mean, it's pentameter. Pretty, pretty clear. It's in my iambic pentameter um, for the most part. Um, so it's a metered poem in the sense of the rhythm and the classic classic English tends to, we tend to speak in iambic pentameter. Um, it's the most obvious. Um, if poets wrote them exactly every time, we'd probably tear our hair out and find it you know, unpleasant. So there's always a certain variation. Um, what, but he's, he's modified the rhyme scheme a little bit from the normal Petrarchan. It's, I, you know, I, I didn't have time last night to double check, although the way it ends, even though it breaks like a Petrarchan, the way it ends with the rhyming couplet feels a little Shakespearean exactly. too. Exactly. So um, that's why I hesitated with that, because I, I think it is more Shakespearean, but I have to look back at the Shakespearean sure. lines. But you know, um, what, what he's done here is Shakespeare altered. You know, um, Wyatt Wyatt altered the sonnet. Wyatt incorporated from Italy and Shakespeare. So, um, well, why I was thinking yeah. was more of a Petrarchan was um, essentially he just followed you know the eight and six model. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, rather than introduce new words C, that would rhyme in the pattern of C, D, E, he kept with the it rhyme, white, height, night. Um, and it creates a strong unity uh, between what was above and what is below. They're also in stuff. All the lines are end stopped. Um, I don't see, let me, in scanning it, I don't see any enjambment. Um, so that's a very strong walking line. There you go. <laughs> so we explored now the structure from a macro point of view, but let's, let's go through um, and talk about the word white mm -hmm. and how many times it appears quite in a few. poem. So we have. I found a sonnet, oh, dipple, yes. spider, fat, and white. Next line, on a white heel all, 
Next line, like a white piece of rigid cloth. Um, let's see, certainly in the next stanza. Associated characters of death and blight. My goodness, in contrast. Um, and further down is Snowdrop, which is white, and a flower like a froth, a spectacle froth, possibly to be white. Exactly. So even when he's not saying it's white, it's white. Right. So what but design of darkness to appall contrast. Indeed. And that, that so let's, let's go through and, and talk about what we associate with the color white. Someone take a stab here, Lewis. Okay, I was going to be shitty. I was going to say morning color for uh, white Asia. is clean. <laughs> okay, we have clean. It's very visible. Visible. It has all colors in it, actually. One thinks of innocence. Physics. Sure. Yeah. Um, all colors. One thinks of innocence. Racism. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Race. But actually, pulling from Shakespeare dark and white actually does have a history that tries ties that in but purity it has a history purity of racism yeah it does you know merchant of venice so well, just you know all the, the, mm -hmm. you know it wasn't deliberately that but it ended up mm -hmm. affecting the interaction between you no. know england and africa well notions of white. contrast and also back. dark dark was evil Right. So white, white is good. So the dark, the terrifying part of this is the contrast between white and dark. Well, yeah, I, I want life to, and death. We'll keep exploring it because I think that's a good start. So we have clean, visible, innocence, um, purity. It's just a few of the examples we've talked about. It also says innocent them, innocent heal all, but it's inside. Yes. Um, now, so I think that's probably more his intention than some of the stuff I brought up. As I think we'll see, white can also do things. I'm just thinking Moby Dick, the white whale. Well, there you right. are. It's still the good and evil. And when the white is employed in a, a, a moment of non-purity, I think it adds to a very unsettling effect. Well. Moby Dick's whiteness was also a very unnatural thing. He was a he was an albino whale, yeah. which is very rare. Rare, and uh, he turned out to be an evil creature. Maybe not. He wasn't. He wasn't that evil. People were trying to kill him, so he just did what was natural, really. Evil in Ahab's uh, <laughs> yeah, in Ahab's eyes. So, but and, and the <coughs> the heel all. Um, which is mentioned in the second line. That's a kind of plant. Flower, yeah. Yeah, that uh, oh, really? is used for um, medicinal purposes. You guys have flower pictures of it? I do. Yeah, this is a heel. Oh, oh good. Cool. Thank you. Okay, how large is the blossom? It's uh, So it is a big blossom. It's a like you know, fairly, fairly good size. Yeah, so it's, it's a wildflower in yeah. Europe. Huh. So as long as we're on that, yeah, cool. um, okay, these thanks. are snowdrops, in case you haven't seen them, the little white flowers yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think they're spring. early spring spring flower yeah they're some of the earliest mm -hmm. so um also white um so what you know the fact that you have a spider that's white um and you have the heel all which is normally blue right but in this case it's white uh, and the moth that is white. Huh. Going back to the first line, dimpled, fat, and white. What I mean, uh, what would you associate with if you heard dimpled, fat, and white? Would you think that it's describing a spider or, or perhaps something else? Uh, one critic suggests well fed. Well fed. And one critic suggested that those are words we might use to describe the baby. Could be. Um, well, any number of things you can think of. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not. It's it is not 
easy to tie that down to any one association, but it certainly lends lends itself to associations, as do all these colors and the, yep. the forms. Um, and of course, that's obviously the connotations are what enrich any oh healthy anyway. Yeah. Um, so we've got. Uh, there's a line in here, mixed ready to begin the morning right. It just sticks out as almost like a, a breakfast commercial. Just sure. For cereal or something? Well, I, th yeah. I think what, uh, what precedes it, assorted characters of death and blight. So it, it's deeply is, ironic, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mixed well, ready to begin. It's a statement of, we don't know what's going to happen every morning. Uh, mm -hmm. And this might be a portent, so might not, if you read yeah. it closely. Uh, right. Well, and then the next line is, like ingredients in a which is brought, which always brings forward to me, Macbeth. Um, yeah. Snowdrop spider. So we've got all this stuff going around. Um, Flower like a froth, dead wings carried like a paper kite. Um, which, you know, with the word kite, you wouldn't think of as, um, you know, sounds like a, a kid's activity. Don't you, don't you find, I think the line, the wayside blue and innocent heel all is, uh, it, it's like the, the flower perform, uh, performs the role of being the context for this coming together. It's what attracts the various mm -hmm. parts to it. And it's doing so uh, innocently. And yet it's indicative of uh, the end of life of a moth at the hands of a spider. Nature, tooth, and cloth. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but so the, the first so that's stanza, quite a, quite a white dinner cloth that's laid out there. <laughs> the, the first stanza sets the stage with yeah. the description. The second stanza is when the, is when questions get asked. There's a real turn here towards exactly that issue of what what does all this mean? What is the what what's happening here that these three things came together? Um, what, you know, what brought the kindred spiders to that height and steered the white moth thither in the night? Yeah. Well, and, what but design? And that. And I think that's his punchline. Absolutely. And that, I think, raises some philosophical issues mm -hmm. of, you know, Emerson, for instance, was big on design. You know, what. Everything it's te te and I'm joking. Well, well, uh, it's you look at teleological argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and if you take yes. away God as yeah. the author of design, which you have to in the post Enlightenment era, then you're talking about some notion of nature, and that we're all driven to do these things. It's the Einstein statement. You know, That's God right. doesn't play. That's what right. is it? Dice with. That's right. Um, or just simple probability. Yeah, we could for Nothing, no design at all. Well, uh, uh, that's what happens well, in that, nature. That, happens that, all that's the time. Yeah, but, but, but that's why the question. Yeah. By hunger for the moth, and the moth is driven by the yeah. desire to perform its function to the plant, and the plant needs the moth, and so there is something, not a design, but there's a, a pattern. To well, also, evolution. I mean, you think about it. Uh, the first question: What had the flower to do? You're with walking the down the road and you see a flower, exactly. and the flower you know? has a spider on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we've got all this stuff going around. Um, flower like a froth, dead wings carried like a paper kite. Um, which, you know, with the word kite, you wouldn't think of as, um, you know, sounds like a, a kid's activity. Don't you, don't you find, I think the line, the wayside blue and innocent heel all is, uh, it, it's like the, the flower perform, uh, performs the role of being the context for this coming together. It's what attracts the various mm -hmm. parts to it. And it's doing so 
uh, innocently, and yet it's indicative of uh, the end of life of a moth at the hands of a spider. Nature, tooth, and claw. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the first so that's stanza, quite a, quite a white dinner cloth that's laid out there. <laughs> the, the first stanza sets the stage with the description. The second stanza is when the, is when questions get asked. There's a real turn here towards exactly that issue of what what does all this mean? What is the what what's happening here that these three things came together? Um, what, you know, what brought the kindred spiders to that height and steered the white moth to the in the night? Yeah. Well, and, what but design? And that. And I think that's his punchline. Absolutely, and that I think raises some philosophical issues. Mm -hmm. Of you know, Emerson, for instance, was big on design. You know what. Everything it's te te and I'm joking. Well, well, uh, it's you look at teleological well, argument. Yeah, 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 and, and, and if God, you take yes. away God as yeah. the author of design, which you have to in the post Enlightenment era, then you're talking about some notion of nature, and that we're all driven to do these things. It's the Einstein statement. You know, That's God right. doesn't play. That's what right. is it? Dice with. That's right. Um, or just simple probability. Then, um, but then uh, the last question is even darker. Well, that's like a bunch of people going to the gas station for a variety of reasons, to fill up the tank, to rob the store, and, or to get a six pack of beer. And then by chance they arrive and somebody gets shot. <laughs> or, or what's the, the um, story, oh, trying to, the bridge over something something, it's been a while since I've River Kwai? Not that one. That's the movie. Oh. But um, so what about it's uh, set in Latin? In it's set in general. No, I'm no, kidding. No, the bridge. The, the bridge. The, the bridge. Bingo. Uh, is exactly. Who the happens to be? The statement is uh, for whom the bell tolls. That's no, there's no. There's another one where they follow all the characters. Like there are four people that are killed on a bridge that collapse. Yeah. And it's a walking bridge. And they trace each person, like, what if this had oh. happened? What if this... That's right. You know, they all happen to be yeah, there. Yeah, how come they happen to be there? What, but they're know? all driven to be there by mm -hmm. their conditioning. Yeah, and, and, and also there's a certain amount of chance, but there they absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah so, it's both. But that, um, that, that last question is such a punch. What, well, read to, read it to again. appall, but the word to appall is really interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, so what but design of darkness to appall, if design governed in a thing so small, which I think he's just taking on the whole question of, is there really any design here? Well, it's not, right. it's not, it's not a benevolent design. Absolutely. Well, it's not a benevolent design. It, 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 it was a design or a conditioning in it, but it's not benevolent. Well, I, I think he does ask that question going on a couple lines above that, but then he <laughs> says, if raises the question, if design govern anything so small. So if there is design, it sure is not working out so great for the, the moth right now. No. But if, but that is, question is, if there's design but at all. it's perfect for the spider. Yes. The spider can live with and it now on just that moth, moth too. Also, I, th I think given, given his... And Frost um, needs the moth for a poem. Yeah, and and given his um, his own proclivities toward design, for example, his statement about um, you know <clears throat> making poetry without a net if you don't have these rhyme schemes, you know, I, my guess is his answer is yes, there's design. Yeah. But he's posing it to us. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting to me how clever this is. If you go to um, the rhyme scheme, blight, broth, kite, so. And just underline, if you took those out, you would still have an ABA line there. And those are the darkest lines in that first uh, stanza. So you could read it, assorted characters of death and blight, like the ingredients of a witch's broth, and dead wings carried like a paper kite. Yeah. Which will lead into Berrigan, by the way, but yeah. 
Well, you, you have a, 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 a real sensitivity to that. It's interesting listening to well, you. Well, you know, talk I'm a poet. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and well, I enjoy that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah. The word Apollo, which you raised, um, it, you know, it humiliates me. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Well, and the, the word yeah. of, of Apollo, um, its yeah. origins um, in Latin means to uh, make white. Does it? Because I was thinking, I missed that, looking up some of that. Blanche. To you make know, white. To Apollo is to, what's its root? Um, uh, probably Latin, but it, I've got it. Okay, here I have to go look that up at home. That's wonderful. Well, in Apollo, I think. A, no, a, a Paul, but yes. or a Paul, like a pallbearer. Pallbearer, yes. yeah. Wow. Death. I get once the again. idea of sort oh, wow. of yeah. a major surprise. When I'm appalled, I'm surprised beyond. I'm horrified. Yeah. 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 You're not just, you know. But and that's but that's carrying deep. the pall bearing that um, as a root. That's lovely. I mean, so, Shakespeare did that a lot too. Just a pull. The origins of a Paul within English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it came in the 1400s to grow pale from Old French. Uh -huh. Sure. Uh, to oh. become or make pale from Latin, polare, meaning cause dismay or shock. But there's this. Oh, like parlor too. When you if you plant, you know, someone has a. Um, the, the word trying to think how you spell it. Pallor. Yeah, the blood yeah, drains out of you. Pallor is part of, part Goes of the to your yeah. heart. So you have this whole family of, of words coming off of that. Pallor. Lovely. Thank you for doing that. Well, we try. Right. We try. <laughs> but how about the notion of what this sonnet is heavily designed? Yes. <laughs> and is it almost a commentary on what the poet himself has done here. Um, ah, that's interesting. I didn't, this is quite a design, this poem. Yes, no. Uh, sure. What brought the kindred spider to that height and steer the white moth to her? Well, at one level, I suggest it, the poet did that in his own imagination. Sure. You know, if you really think about it, like the one place where there is chance, if you're dealing with um, design, is the very first verb to find. I found. There's the is it chance or design that he found? That's a really great point. A dimpled spider, fat and white. And I think that's an open question because <laughs> he, he's made his life. Uh, habits associated with looking closely at nature. Right, so is that chance or is that because he's right. a lifetime of design? That's right. <laughs> I think it's an interesting question and not easily resolved. The more I dug into this poem, the, just... Yeah, the more the art of it begins to <laughs> hold and, up. And, and therefore, I mean, yeah, but I think he's looking for something deeper which is hardly a profound comment, and then simply finding a spider on a... Oh, yeah. yeah much no, it's and, what he makes of finding the, the spider. The depthness takes us to the, the, the... beyond the perception. Well, and I think you hit it on the head, you know, when you're saying it's about life and death, but I think it's life and death within the context of is there a greater design to all of this? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and and and, invi and invited into that perception or that analysis, that th thought, by something as prosaic as finding a spider on a flower in now, the backyard. What's interesting, again, the more we look at this, sure. um, the heaviest line in the first, um, I'll say quatrain, the first four, mm -hmm. is the fourth. So if you just had the three lines and you were just observing what you saw, but where he moves to his heavier move is right there in the middle of the first um, stanza. Are you suggesting assorted characters? Yes, assorted characters, death and blight. I mean, there, there's where he says, 
darker now, I think, you know. And to begin and the morning. And then he puts this morning, yeah. Right, the correct way, the That's inevitable so good, way. Yes. Well, and it also could bring out the word right, R-I-T-E. It could be someone could associate sure, R-I-G-H-T and also think... There's a ritual or a... Yeah, to begin the morning right, you know, yeah. right or sit down and write every morning. Oh, or right, W-R-I. Wish I had that luxury. Mm -hmm. okay. Or right wing. I'm no, just joking. Uh, we didn't um, talk so much about the word wayside, <clears throat> but um, I associate that with not only a wayside, something at the side of a road. A rest stop. Yeah, the rest stop. But then there's also ideas of falling by the wayside. That's right. Actually, Getting off the course, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, even more importantly, Flunking it is the fact it. that there is a road. You have to have a road to have a wayside. That's right. Mm -hmm. And a road right. is a design, and a road is it's a, a path. road or the it's way. It's a path. You know. It's a direction. Yeah, exactly. And it, with that use of it points up the fact that most of these flowers are blue. Yes. If you're walking on the path and you look on both yes. sides, most it's of them blue. are blue. But here, found one with a white, yeah. there's a white one. So it's like the Moby out. Dick. So it's sort of like chicory and Queen Anne lace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did I share, well, um, well, there's a lot to this, isn't there? there really is. <laughs> I know, it's lovely. I mean, it's... The word of Paul, there was another element to it that I wanted to share, and that was from Moby Dick. Uh, the narrator, Ishmael, says, it was the whiteness of the whale that, above all things, appalled me. Oh, sure. <laughs> Cross is a word. Right? Oh, that's good. Good great. reference, Kurt. One last word, unless people want to keep going with this. Why the kindred spider in the third line in the second stanza? What brought the kindred spider? Oh, of kind. Kindred Meaning of a species. Because that the root of kin is kind, and kind the root is species, not niceness. Well, and uh, one definition of kindred, yeah, um, means one's family or relations right. or relationship by blood. Yeah, mm -hmm. similar then, in kind. Yeah, category. Uh, just generally related. So you think he's reflecting on himself? Well, or, or, what how, what's the or how kindred nature, to tooth and claw, you know, demands a kind of kindredness. So the moth, the spiders on the white flower, and the moth is drawn to the white. They're so all they're drawn to this particular flower. Yeah, so there, there's, so a, there's a kindred spirit yeah, to that, them. That, that so I guess it's the, ugly in the end. The spider's the white and the flower's white. Well, so maybe yeah, it is. Kindred. I think so. Maybe you need the spiders so. to control the number of moths. Yeah. The poem you know, wouldn't so, read the same way if yeah, the spider yeah. was off on some other kind of poem. Well, I, I do yeah. think you're, you're on to something. The kindred implies a comparison to something. Right. And um, here the something, um, Strangely, is a spider, a flower, and a dead moth. Yes, right. Also, They're all brought together Look at the verb the after the then. You know, then nice. kindred, what brought, and then steered. Well, and there's it, again a you know a design that steered the white moth. So, and at one level, uh, Frost himself steered yes. the spider. Well, and steered the white moth. What but design? You know. And it was a heck of a highly designed sound. Mm -hmm. What spirit it was. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yes, it is.